The first thing you want to do when you're using watercolors is get all of your watercolors wet. Uh, they do not need to be soaking wet. You'll notice I just dip my brush in water and just tap it on each color that I'm going to use. Uh, I'm not swirling my brush around in each of the colors, just putting a little bit of water and then waiting. If you're watching this video on your own, go ahead and pause the video and get your watercolors wet. The first technique we're going to learn and practice is called wet on wet. So first you're going to get some plain water and cover the square of paper you're going to do this technique on uh, and get it wet like the name suggests. So you just are covering that spot with water. Then you're going to dip your brush in the wet paint, the color that you want to use. Uh, when you do that, you will notice that your uh, paint starts to kind of bleed and spread out more than it does when you're on a dry paper. So a wet on wet technique is really great if you want a, a really blended kind of look. So if, again, if you're watching this video without Miss Collier, uh, pause the video uh, and practice this technique. The next technique is called dry brush. Uh, to do this, I am going to put one layer of color on my paper first, and I'm going to let it dry and come back. So uh, this is me getting a layer just of yellow and spreading it out um, kind of evenly. Um, so do that on your paper, and then I'll show you what the rest of dry brush does after it dries. For the dry brush technique, once your spot is dry, you will want to make sure you squeeze out all the water from your brush. So I am wiping mine off on a napkin and checking on my hand to make sure it's really dry. Then it's this is why it's important to get your paint palette wet because now my paints, I'm going to go dip my brush in a color that I want uh, to get some paint. Um, this is a great technique to use if you want something um, to have a sharp line. Um, you do, if you don't want it to look really blended, you want to really be able to tell where those lines are. So I'm using some analogous colors, reds, oranges, and yellows, um, and making it look kind of like I have a textured crossing lines pattern. So again, this is dry brush. You want your paper and your brush to both be pretty dry. The next technique is called a gradient. You might know uh, the word ombre. Uh, so you pick one color, and you are going to start at one side of this section and you're going to paint a kind of a dark section at one end and then you'll just keep adding water to your brush and not adding much more paint and keep spreading your paint out and make it get lighter and lighter and lighter until you get to almost white. This technique is kind of hard to see on the camera, but it's um, called texture with a tissue or with a napkin. So you're gonna paint your surface um, just with the wet uh, paint. You can mix colors or you can do just one color. Uh, and then you will take a paper towel or a napkin or a tissue and dab at the wet paint. Um, and so you pull away some of that paint. This is a great way to make um, something look like clouds um, or just have a lighter, some lighter and darker spots in your paint. This technique is called a wax resist. Um, I have a crayon in my hand and so I'm just making some lines or designs. You could write your name um, on my paper. You could use any color. You could use crayons or you can use oil pastels. And then I'm going to paint directly on top. Um, 
if you know, uh, if you've ever seen oil and water mixed together, they do not mix well. And so what happens, it's a little hard to see here, but what happens is the paint sticks to the paper, but it does not stick to the crayon or oil pastel. Lastly, if you put paint on the um, tray of your watercolor palette, you want to clean it off. Um, so that it doesn't drip when you close your tray and so that the next person has a clean place to put their paint. Uh, I do that by getting my brush wet just with water to get that paint um, liquidy and then I just wipe it up with a paper towel or um, some sort of napkin. And lastly, uh, once your paper is all the way dry, do not do this when your paper is still kind of wet. You will carefully peel off your tape. Notice how even my tape is pulling off a little bit of the paper. It's okay. Uh, gently pull, pull slowly until you get all of your tape off your paper. And finally, you can use a Sharpie to add some embellishment or some details um, if you have time. Some of you won't have time to do this, um, but if your paper is dry, uh, and you found some watercolor techniques that you like, you can add some uh, lines on top of your drawings. Or you can do this at home when you bring this paper home. So think about which watercolor techniques are your favorite, and those are the ones you're going to want to use on your overlapping line drawing.